Welcome, welcome to Arizona Real Estate News, where we try to recap the week as fast as we can for you and have a little editorial and commentaries at the bottom. Here with Pat McMasters with Price Mortgage, Jackie and Ruby with Arizona Foothills Century 21. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. What's Ready going on? And roll. Good. <laughs> hey, there, there's a lot going on. I, uh, I'm going to show you my little seven-day moving average here. <clears throat> and... Uh, this shows this huge drop off right there, right? Uh, and the red number being number of contracts. I put a little yellow arrow over here. Guess what that is? That's Memorial Day last year. It's kind of funny because I have people telling me, oh, Memorial Day is a great time to do open houses. Like, no, it's not. It's, it's terrible. And uh, it's going to slow down. And why do I know that? Because here's Memorial Day. Here's Fourth of July. Here's Labor Day. There's Thanksgiving. There's Christmas. Now, the difference is, though, this looks like a big gap. See that yellow line? So I traced where we are right here, which is about 3,100 homes going to contract. And it looks like a huge difference, but it's only 400 homes. Mm -hmm. So there was a dip in sales that was pretty pretty noticeable. And uh, um, the increase in listings was actually not too bad last week, uh, but it wasn't astronomical again. Uh, any guesses why? Memorial, Memorial Day. Day weekend. <laughs> we lost Pat there for a moment. So we did jump up from 8132 to 8647 on the listing side. And the reason I put 2018 up here on the top is we have a long road to go before we even start thinking that we're approaching what we consider normal or balanced inventory. And it just takes a long time. And there's a lot of news out there right now that things are changing quickly and we've seen a shift in the market, but it's just going to take time no matter where it goes. Last time in 2005, when it started its ascension, it, it took about 18 months. Yeah. And we saw in 2005, 55,000 homes on the market that climbed to 65,000 in 2006 before things fell apart. And even here, when we look at the supply index, it's barely coming up. We look at the market index and it's going down, but it's gone down before and gone down before. So we just have to watch and see where it moves over time. And on the demand side, this is an index. The demand is what they're calling normal or 100. Yep. This one got a, a little stand out there for us. This is the number of price reductions. You can see that it's spiked up. And you can see that it spiked up in 2019. And we can go back and we can see why. Here's a chart that shows when they raised interest rates in 2019. This little green chart down here shows the rate spike that started in 2018 and went up. And then we see that prices actually stayed flat and then they eventually went up. But we can see that after the rate spike, that sales dropped immediately. So the sales dropped first then the prices start to come down. And we're seeing that now. Rate spike up, sales coming down. Prices haven't reacted yet. They haven't had time to react. So my dog is reacting. Uh, but they haven't <laughs> had time to react yet. So that's going to take some time. And the correlation between interest rates and uh, and price reductions are, are pretty clear. So... Yeah. We lost you for a moment there, Pat. So. Yeah, I was I was saying some bad words behind the screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome back. I so was, I'm glad you did lose me because um, you wouldn't have liked that what I said was hearing saying. Yeah, well, I, I, I've been there. I've done that. That's what you got the mute mic thing there. So, Pat, yeah. I know uh, um, you know, sharing the screen today is a little difficult because of your location, but uh, we're really kind of a non news event on the mortgage side. Is that the best way to describe it? Pretty much, yeah. Let me see here. Can I um, bear with me here? Let me just see if I can. Um, yeah, just here. Let me see if I can go back there, real quick. There's a lot of press out there on what the Fed's going to do, and the Fed is talking to the president today, and and you know, and there's a lot of news about how they're going to have to clamp down much harder than they say they're going to do, and yet rates are staying yeah. right there this week. Now, it may be again because it was a holiday week, but uh, no, they. They actually, the rates were, they got hit a little bit today, but, you know, I wish I could share my screen, but I'm not going to, um, 
you know, believe, bottom line is it's been kind of plateauing the last couple of weeks or um, rates have been kind of hitting a ceiling. And um, I think the first act of the, you know, the play called the Federal Reserve is kind of uh, um, played out. And uh, we kind of know what's happening. Like you said, June and July. I mean, I'd like to have been a fly. I don't know if they recorded that, but I would love to have been a fly in the, on the wall with the Fed, with uh, Powell and Biden, because obviously they have to be somewhat separate. And um, it'd be interesting to see that he's obviously knows that there's some pressure. He probably put pressure on them some way, shape or form. And I think well, that's but they're, but they're not supposed to, though. Right. I mean, they, uh, no, the president no. is supposed to let the Fed be independent. But I doubt there's ever been a time where that's exactly how that worked out. I'm sure Carter had a lot to say to Paul Volcker. Yeah. And I think I think it just goes to show you. I mean, you kind of read, you know, between the lines that Biden knows that he's behind the eight, eight ball in terms of inflation and the feds obviously are increasing. And the job numbers are coming out Thursday and Friday. We got that. I don't, I, we'll see what happens there, but it, it's, I think we're starting to see, you know, they're concerned because they, I think they know that inflation is higher and more out of control than what they really want to leave. I, I just, I'm not, I'm not trusting what the government's saying the last year and a half. I yeah. mean, I hate to be, I'm not, I'm not trying to politicize it, but they were, like I said, that back, remember you and I were talking, I said, I was reading Barry Habib, the MBS Highway, and I believe this myself. This is before I read Barry Habib. I said this. Remember, I told you. I said, remember, you and I would talk behind the scenes. Like this inflation is not transitory. They're lying to us, right. and I think they're doing they're doing more of it. So I think it's going to be worse than I think the market knows. The market's smarter than Biden and Powell, and they're you know they're reading into this, and it's been stabilized, but um, it's going to be you know. Five and a half, five, you know, high fours, low fives. So we might see a goal higher, but. Well, ladies, what uh, what are you, are you feeling the impact of rates out, uh, showing homes and, and listing homes? I mean, what yeah, are you yeah. hearing and seeing? I think the most impact I'm seeing is with sellers getting concerned. Um, two reasons. One, they are afraid they may have missed the peak. Um they are fearful because you got to think about it. Most of the sellers, the majority of them, they're going to buy. And so those sellers become buyers. And I think they have a little bit of a concern about the rates. So I think, you know, a lot of them and and we were slow this weekend. We were very slow. I actually got to take a couple of days off and spend it with Jordan. So it was kind of nice. I welcomed the phone not ringing, um, but we really didn't have showings today. It changed. Um, but I, I think what's happening is that two things, the sellers are concerned they missed the peak and they're also concerned about rates going up because they're going to be buyers as well. And so I think that's why we're having, you know, a lot of sellers were sitting on the fence thinking prices will go higher, prices will go higher, prices will go higher. And that's when I'm going to sell. But I think even they are starting to have concerns about the rates going up. So one, well, they don't want to have missed the peak, and two, they know they're going to be buyers. Well, Ruby, let me ask you a question because I'm seeing this a little bit that when when they do list, they they still have it in the back of their mind here that they're going to get all kinds of showings and multiple offers, just like they did in February. Are you mm -hmm. seeing that, or is that just me? Well, I mean, we are still seeing that uh, people. Uh, the sellers aren't uh, being realistic about what they're pricing. I think we said that last week, but um, they are still um, wanting to price, test the market a little bit higher than they would um, normally in a normal market. But yeah, they're still trying to um, push it. Yeah. We all know how test the market works out. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it, <laughs> but it's still, it picked up today, you said? Yeah, today we yes. had a couple of showing requests for one of our listings that has been kind of just, um, we felt like it might be staling. We um, tried a couple of things with a bonus and that type of thing. So hopefully that'll help move it. It's very enticing. Well, one of our YouTube subscribers today got an offer accepted in the town of Gilbert. I was pretty excited about that. And guess what? It was a multiple offer situation. Not as many. There were only three. But at the same time, um, it was a really slow 
weekend. And as I was looking through the weekend, um, I discovered something that I hadn't paid that much attention to before. You know, when you get into showing time and you go to make an appointment, you can see how many other appointments are made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they allow overlapping appointments, that feature goes away. Oh, I didn't know that. You didn't know I that didn't either. either. You taught me something. It and it said, What's that? if they allow overlapping appointments, so let's say you and Jackie want to go see Makes the sense. home at three o'clock. Okay. Um, if they don't allow you both to be there at the same time, you're going to see that Jackie's got 30 minutes blocked out at three o'clock and you can only come in at three 30. If they allow overlapping appointments, None of that shows up in showing time. So I'm looking at it going, nobody's looking at it today. I find that hard to believe. Interesting. And I got there and sure enough, there was another couple there with the listing agent looking at it. Mm -hmm. And then I went back a couple times because I had some questions and stuff. And I went back and I didn't see anybody pulling up out front. And I checked it again on Sunday. And Sunday was when I discovered that if they don't put that in there, Mm -hmm. uh, so there went my little detective thing that I thought was pretty <laughs> useful for a long time. It turns out to be useless, but, uh, I think, so did anything happen over the week that made you change your views on, uh, I'm going to say the midterm of where you think real estate's headed? So I've had a lot of yes and no. Um, I had quite a few conversations with some different agents today, getting a feel because I was a little bit concerned and kind of second guessing myself after last week's show. And honestly, after reading some of the comments that so many people are so focused on, we're going to have a crash. And then everything that's out there on YouTube, everybody thinks we're going to have a crash and it's normal for us to be slow right now, getting out of school, the holiday weekend and such. But I, I talked to quite a few agents today and they said the same thing, that they have a lot of buyers that are, are coming back into the market that have been sitting on the fence because they're excited that there's some choices. Mm -hmm. So I, I still think we're going to end up having a pretty strong summer. I, 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 there's going to be a big determining factor. Things could change depending on what happens with interest rates. I mean, if they do the 50 basis points, okay. Um, it's, it, that's really, to me, what's going to have an effect, but all these sellers coming to the market, like I said, they're buyers. And then all the agents I've been talking to today, they're telling me that their buyers are getting off the fence and coming back. So mm -hmm. I'm in still kind of in the though, same place. In terms of rates though, just real quick, if they do raise rates that actually, believe it or not, looking out six to 12 months ahead of time, the market might take that as a positive because higher rates knocks out inflation. So the market looks ahead. So actually rates, the real uh, market um, mortgage rates might go down, believe it or not. That's and a good point. Mm -hmm. the, the other misconception that I see, and we get it a lot in YouTube comments and keep commenting because that's what we like. In fact, if you want anything particular, email us down here at your easy news at gmail.com. And if you need any help buying or selling, that's the email to get a hold of us. Um, but why is it that there's a perception that real estate agents are upset because prices are not going up as fast and we're just greedy and and we only like up markets? I, I think everybody, all, all agents want a balanced market. Ruby, what do you think? Absolutely. I'd rather have a balanced market yeah. any day over um, that rush, 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 having to write an offer before you've even seen the property standing 20 people deep in line just so that you can show the property to your buyer. So you're like stacked up behind other agents and their clients. It, it really just makes it uncomfortable. And then overwhelming our sellers with multiple offers, sitting there reviewing so many different offers with them, it becomes confusing and stressful for them and as well as us as agents. Yeah. People are building in a sense of urgency that doesn't need to be there. So we had a counter offer that was coming on, Friday night and um, the agent was at the, at a movie. So she sent me the counter offer from her phone as a PDF and said, here you go. It's six 30. I have to have it back by eight. Oh and my gosh. I was like, why do you, okay. So I I got, it out and got it signed, but which brought me to that question, you know, when agents, when we write offers and then you put in there, this offer is good until like Monday at five o'clock. 
it doesn't really die at Monday at five o'clock, does it? No, no. no. Unless you choose to have it die at Monday at five o'clock. Because <laughs> if if I write you an offer, Ruby, and it's it's and it says this offer is only good Monday till five o'clock, uh, Monday at noon, I can still pull that offer, can't I? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So you can I don't even know why that time. line is in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of undue stress that's created. I mean, what if you don't get another offer in the meantime? You know, it's still, if, if they bring it in at six o'clock on Monday and you didn't have any other offers come through, then yeah. would you just really waste that offer or would try to make something out of it? Well, get yeah. this. I sent an email to the agent and I said, is there anything, and I always reach out to him like this, is there anything that the seller's looking for besides price that's important to him? And I got, and I told my buyer this, I go, I got a cookie cutter approach or response. Yes, I did, Ringo. I got, and uh, <laughs> it, it was, it was um, appraisal contingency, this, now all of the things. And I said, this was so February. Right. You know, all of you. And I thought, he's not going to be in that kind of a bidding situation. And it yeah. was, I know for sure it was a great agent, really a cool guy so far. Just, I say so far, because you never know how it's going to turn out. But it, you know, it was just copy and paste. You know, oh, we'll just send him this. And I read to my client and he goes, what do you think? I go, it's just, just he sent us a template. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it turns out we didn't have to do all that stuff. So I thought it was a very, very interesting Crazy. weekend. So I think the numbers to watch now going forward is we're going to see that Memorial Day number is going to dip down. I want to yep. see how fast it spikes up the rest of the week going into the weekend because I think it's going to spike and I want to see if it's spiking up at a faster rate than it did last Memorial Day because that'll be kind of telling. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so stay tuned. Everybody have a fabulous rest of the week. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you.